Hey everybody, it's Amy Schrader. I'm with Remax Real Estate 10 and Kim Swan is not going to join us today. She is feeling under the weather. So y'all send some prayers her way that she'll get to feeling better. Um, but I am here today with Gerald Jones from Bentley's Home Inspection and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the home inspection process, what that's looking for, and how it helps you as a buyer. So, um, you know, last week we had talked about writing an offer on a house and that one of your contingencies would be to have a home inspection done. So, Gerald, why don't you help us out and tell us why is it so important for a home buyer to get a home inspection? Well, I look at it as people are probably spending more money than they're ever going to spend at one time on one thing. And you want to protect your investment like anything you do, whatever you buy or whatever you want to protect with some kind of insurance or some type, something. We could call it insurance. But a home inspection, what it entails is me or another home inspector coming in and going through the house top to bottom, looking for uh, defects and deficiencies or maintenance items or anything that might be going on with the house. And what we do, we do a written report and we present it to the people that are buying the house after the inspection is done and tells us their findings and what their recommendations or maybe not even recommendations, but suggestions might be about some of the things that they might find. Okay. So basically, you're looking for any and everything that could be wrong with that house to make the buyer aware of it. We try our best to. I mean, we're human like everybody, and we can't see everything, but we have some equipment that we can use that will help us in what we do. But people need to understand what we're doing is a visual inspection. We can't take things apart. We can't see through walls. Right. Uh, any place that we can get to physically, we are required to go. Uh, and it's in our standards, and the Tennessee State Standards re require us to do that. Now, we don't have to do anything that we feel that will physically harm us or if we're in danger, like walking on a roof. Uh, I walk on every roof I can. But in our standards, it says we don't have to if we feel if it feels unsafe to us. And anything that we do, if we feel unsafe doing it, we're supposed to report on it, saying the reason why we didn't inspect something. So sometimes that's more just as important as writing something up and saying why we can't inspect something. Okay. So what exactly does the home inspection entail? Like what, you know, specifically are you doing when you go in to do that home inspection? I am looking for anything and everything. My number one goal is safety. Uh, anything will get somebody hurt, maimed, or killed. I mean, that's, I mean, that's how I look at it. I look at every inspection I do, and I'm doing it for a three-year-old or my grandmother. Okay. Uh, that's what I look at it for. I mean, everything that we find may not be critical to getting somebody hurt or maimed, but, you know, maintenance items too. We're looking for everything that we can find. Okay. So, I guess I'm just asking, do you check, like, electrical systems? Mm -hmm. Do you check the appliances? We do, to a certain point. Now, all the electrical... We check it as best as we can. We take a cover off electrical panel, look at the burgers and wires, see if there's any issues going on there. Every outlet or anything that we can get to, we will check it with a tester to see if it, you know, it's wired correctly or, you know, if it even has power. Uh, that are things that we're looking for electrical. And even in, under the house, if, you know, if we can get under it and see if it's exposed, we look at wiring underneath to see if it's, you know, frayed or damaged anyway. Same thing in the attic. Uh, there's a lot of electrical in most houses, so there's a lot of places to look for electrical issues. Okay. All right. Um, what about the plumbing? How do you... We do a general thing with the plumbing. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, anybody can flush a toilet or turn the faucet on. They can. But what we're looking for is leaks or loose areas or things that may cause a problem down the road or something. Uh, worn things, you know... A lot of the homes that are sold, some of them, you know, have the older plumbing in it, such as cast iron galvanizers, things like that. Even though they may look okay, uh, we're looking for water pressure at different places. And, it, you know, we're looking at possibilities, especially in the old plumbing, uh, the cast iron galvanizer, the connections and stuff. Sometimes they may be to the point where they're about to go, but they haven't yet. Okay. All right. Um trying to think of what else it is that you do. And we check all of anything in the house we're going to check. We check the heat and air. If it's summertime, you know, we're going to check the air conditioning. If it is a heat pump, a lot of people have a misconception that we can check both of them at the same time, but sometimes we can't. 
as far as the heat pump goes, they use the same components to heat as they do the cold. So if it's working in one mode, it should work in the other one. But we're, uh, like I said, in the summertime, we'll check if it is a heat pump. You know, we're checking for the in air conditioned mode. If it's in the wintertime like it is now, we're checking it in the heat mode. Now, if it has an air conditioning unit and a furnace, it's two different things. We can check air conditioners in the wintertime if it's not too cold. Uh, my cutoff point is somewhere around freezing, and uh, you don't want to check an air conditioner when it's real cold outside because you could dam damage it, you know, the compressors and things like that. Right, and at that point, these people don't even own the house that you're right. doing the inspection for. So, yeah, yeah I can understand that. We have, we have that. to respect every, everybody's property. Like you said, you know, I'm doing it for the buyer, but I've still got to respect the owner's property because it's their property. And if they say I can't do something, I can't do it. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I know that we're in East Tennessee, so not all houses are hooked up to city water and sewer. Right. Um, so are there like auxiliary inspections besides just checking the house that you can do for a while? We do several auxiliary things. Uh, we, do, we can do a septic dye test, which entails flushing dye down the toilet and the water run for a certain amount. We'd like to run like five, six hundred gallons at least, and maybe even more than that if the house has been empty a while. What we're trying to do is flood the system where the dye, if there's an issue with the tank that needs to be pumped, the dye will come to the top of the ground. Or if there's a break in the field line, the dial will come that way. That's one of the things we offer. We offer radon tests. We offer well tests, water tests, which a lot of stuff we do, we can send to the lab and have it analyzed as just water tests and things. But, what uh, do you mean by water tests? What are you checking on that? Uh, as far as the water test goes, most people are worried about E. coli or bacteria. Okay. And we can send, we send theirs to the National Lab in Oak Ridge, and they can check for, they are, they can take, check for nitrates, nitrates, traits and all that stuff. There's all kinds of different things you can check for water uh, that might be harmful to people. And that's one of the things that we can check or have them check for us and they send them the report. Okay. All right. Diana has asked the question, if you buy a home and the furnace goes out four months later, do you have any recourse? Um, do you want to answer that or you want me to, to take that? Well, I mean, there's always a recourse. Uh, what we're doing, we're, we're doing an inspection in a time frame of a few hours. We can tell you that the furnace was working during that three or four hour period. Period, and but we're also looking at an eye. How old is the furnace? How long has it been in service? Has it been serviced? Is it clean? Is it dirty? Is it rusty? And we may make comments on that. That if I see a furnace is at least fifteen years old, or maybe in ten years old, if it has issues that I can see it's had in the past, like it's leaks or rust areas or something, I'm gonna have recommend that they have a heat and air come in and look at it. And uh, I'm not trying to throw the buck off on somebody else. I'm letting you know that somewhere down the road, this thing's going to break down because all mechanical things do. They don't last forever. So it's got a lot to do with the age of the thing it started with. Okay. And Diana, I guess to answer your question, um, I mean, you really don't have a recourse to go back to that home inspector or to go back on the seller. Um, as Gerald alluded to, I mean, things do wear down over time so if it was a newer um unit and it you know broke on your whatever then you probably just need to go back to the manufacturer on it so sorry about that but yeah, yeah. we've had houses you know i've had a house that closed on it and two weeks later the water heater went out and you know it's unfortunate but that is kind That's of a, a part of life it is part of life i mean I, uh, i'm not saying i've ever done an inspection and something didn't happen the next day and sometimes it does i mean uh you never know what's going to trigger something to happen to, you know cause it to mess up or tear up or just die but uh like i said we're doing an inspection and in if you want to put it this way in a, in a spot where we're doing a two or three hour frame of time and if nothing goes on during that two or three hour frame of time, we can't really say, you know, it's going to tire up tomorrow because we don't know. Right. But we right. can warn you on age on it that, you know, it's got the possibility of not lasting too much longer. Okay. All right. Well, we are winding down on time for today. Um, but this again was Gerald Jones with Bentley's Home Inspection Services. And, um, you know, if you're looking to buy a house, like we said, you definitely want to get a home inspection. So, Gerald is a good person to have come out. Um, he's probably my favorite inspector. And they also will do the pest inspection for you through Bentley. So it's kind of an all-in-one. You can send one person out, get all your inspections done at the same time. Um, you can find Gerald on Facebook. You can find Bentley's Home Inspection on Facebook. 
And next week, uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about writing the offer. And then the following Wednesday, I'm going to have Mary Ann from Choice Home Warranty here. And she's going to talk to everybody a little bit about what a home warranty is, what it covers, and why it's a good negotiating tool for you as a buyer. So, thanks again for joining us. And if you know somebody looking to buy a house, please tag them or share the video with them. We'll see you next Wednesday.